Okay, in this next section, we're going to take all the concepts we've been talking about. Uh, the fact that you know, we can understand light in terms of uh, a wave. Uh, we can, um, uh, we can, there's a discrete energy levels between uh, the electron orbitals and an atom, and the fact that matter itself uh, can behave in a wave under certain circumstances, and put them all together to come up with a more quantitative picture of what's going on inside an atom. So the learning objectives uh, for this segment, let me share screen. The learning objectives for this segment are um, to understand what the Schrodinger equation computes, and to know the allowed solutions to the Schrodinger equation for the hydrogen atom. So some facts, what we need next. So matter on a small enough scale, i.e. electrons, starts to behave like waves. And at the atomic level, we only know about the probability of where particles are. Their exact location is not defined. So one more thing we're going to need is that there's only certain wavelengths and wave patterns that fit into a confined space. Otherwise, these waves cancel each other out if they don't have those wavelengths. Own, and therefore only certain electron wave patterns are allowed around an atom or molecule. So uh, remember, overlapping matter waves, just the same as with overlapping light waves, interfere with, e with each other. Uh, you get weird patterns uh, um, that come up. And so let's take a look at what happens if we have a wave, uh, we're going to simplify things, have a wave that's confined in 2D. So um, electron waves, uh, we claim, overlap themselves constructively. And these overlap leads to standing waves, regions where the electrons are most likely to be in space when um, they're in a small confined area. See the links, and I'll show some of this in a second. So an example in 2D, remember electrons are 3D. So if we have uh, a wavelength, uh, uh, if we have a, a, some sort of wave of the right wavelength, and it has exactly the right wavelength, say for example, that four wavelengths fit around a circle um, exactly, and, and their length is exactly 2 pi r, then when they go around the circle, they will uh, constructively interfere with each other, and you have a stable pattern. However, if you have any other sort of wavelength, if the wavelength is such that, you know, three-fifths of the wavelength uh, is, uh, is 2 pi r, then when it goes around, it will interfere with each other. Uh, as the wave travels around, it cancels itself out. So let me um, share uh, uh, another uh, this is a nice uh, uh, demo that I've, I've linked for you to look at. Um, here we go. So here we have a setup. So this is standing waves in Bohr's atomic model in 2D. So what it's going to do, it's going to draw a wave um, uh, around this. So the wave goes around. And right now, uh, the number of uh, times that it goes around per unit wavelength is 4.92. And you notice it's slightly off. So these different wavelengths uh, the, the, the different times that it goes around the circle is going to cancel out with each other. Uh, if you add up all these different waves, you can see like the history of all the waves. If you add them all up, they add up to the average value. Um, let's move this to five though. Let's uh, um, move the number to exactly five. So if it's exact, uh, it didn't stay exactly five. Ah, well, make stationary. So if it's exactly five, as it traces around, let's start over again so we can see it tracing. As it goes around, um, uh, goes around, uh, it, as it goes around, it's tracing out the same orbit each time. And so you have a wave pattern that uh, remains stationary, that remains in place. Yeah, any other number, so we can look at n equals five, you know, n equals six, uh, only if, uh, if the wavelength is, has certain values will it actually produce a wave that works. Um, the rest of the time, it will um, provide, let's speed this up a little bit. The rest of the time, it will result in a wave that interferes with itself. So that's what we're interested in is uh, identify, see as it goes around, um, the waves, each, each time it goes around, it cancels things out. So that's the idea. Only when you have certain wavelengths, certain energies of light, do you get uh, patterns that are stable. Other patterns are not stable. So um, let's take a look at the math here. Um, uh, so in this case, um, the wavelength, uh, uh, yes, yeah, so this would also work for, you know, the wavelength being 2 pi r or um, 6 times the wavelength length equals 2 pi r. You have to have n times the wavelength equals 2 pi r. 